Uh, good evening. Today I have Dan Scotto with me. He's come to chat to me about his first book, Damaged, and his new book, which is coming out soon. So hello, Dan. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself and your books and how you became a writer? Certainly. Hi there. Uh, so I'm Dan Scotto and I'm originally from St Albans in Hertfordshire, but I now live in Scotland on the coast. Um, I am a graphic designer in my day job. Um, I paint as well for fun. Um, and my journey to being a writer, uh, I, I've always loved books. Um, always been interested in, in, in writing and written English. I did English A-level. Um, but then I went on to uni to do uh, art and design instead. So I didn't pursue the writing kind of side of things. Um, and then life got in the way for a very long time. Um, and then I think probably when I moved to Scotland, uh, my, my lifestyle became a bit more relaxed and I had a bit more time on my hands. Um, it's also probably getting older as well and not getting out drinking all the time. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I had an idea in my head for damaged for, for, for a while and it was playing around and I thought this could work. Um, and I, I probably started writing it four or five years ago, to be honest. Um, and I think when I first started, I wasn't really ever imagining that it would be published. I think it was just for me, it's for something to do. Um, and then as it went on, and got further and further along the story, I thought, do you know what, this, this, this is working. Um, just quite enjoying this. Um, and then when it was finished, I didn't do anything with it for quite a long time um, because I didn't, I was scared of um, rejection about it, I think. Um, I didn't really, I didn't really know what to do. Um, I didn't know if it was any good. Uh, and then a few people who were quite close to me had a look at it and, and said, you know, this is this is not bad. You should you should submit this. Um, and I I did. I sent it off to to Bloodhound, my publisher, and amazingly, um, that with a full manuscript manuscript uh, request within a week, uh, I was quite surprised by. Um, and I sent the full manuscript and they offered me a contract for it and, and that was it. And I think uh, even, even then, I thought, you know, I don't know if this is any good. I don't know, um, you know, self-doubt and all that and imposter syndrome. Um, and, and yeah, it was when it, it, it was released and people started contacting me through social media and telling me what they thought about it and I started reading the reviews online and, and it really kind of spurred me on to, to, to keep going and, and write more. So that's, that's where we are now. Um, what did you read as a child? You said you used to love reading, so what were your books? So when I was young a young child I, I love Roald Dahl um, I think probably because of, because his stories were quite dark and I like dark things um, which is why I write the sort of books that I write um, and then as I got a little bit older and I was in my early teens I read a lot of the point horror series um, uh, I loved reading horror stories um, as I got older I read a lot of Stephen King um, and then probably more 
into my twenties onwards, I, I began reading more psychological thrillers, um, and that's kind of where I'm at now. That's mostly what I read. I, I, I do like the odd comedy. If I need something to lift my spirits, I'll read something just to lighten myself up a bit, because it can be very doom and gloom when you when you're writing horrible stories all the time and and reading them as well. And sometimes you just need something to lighten things up a bit. Yeah, it's funny. Um, you're the second author recently that's mentioned the point horror, but they take me back to when I was a young teenager as well. I loved those books. So. Oh, I, I was obsessed with them. Honestly, I think I had every single one of them. Yeah, me too. And I've still got my Roald Dahl books, actually, on my shelf. They're still there. <laughs> um, what does your writing space look like? Well, I actually don't have a designated writing space. Um, I, I write wherever I can sit and feel comfortable in the house. Um, so I write here sometimes. I write in front of the telly sometimes, but not that much because I prefer I prefer silence when I'm when I'm working, and so I really need need to concentrate. Um, but generally, I'll sit anywhere in the house uh, where I can get comfy. And in the summer, because I've been working from home since last March, um, in my lunch break, I would go out in the garden for an hour when it was nice and warm and sit and write out garden so I, I don't have I mean the, the room that I'm using is an office which is actually the dining room um, I probably would have written in there before but because I'm sitting there all day now I don't want to sit there all evening as well because you know, it feels like a, I'm always at the desk so yeah sitting on the sofa generally <laughs> which sounds terrible I know but I like to be comfy and then I can I'm pretty sure um, Duncan Brockwell sits on his sofa to write as well, unless Millie nicks his seat, so you're not the only one. <laughs> the trouble is that the dogs, um, as soon as I sit down on the sofa, they'll be up next to me and I'll have one squashed in either side and it, it makes it <laughs> sometimes. But... It's because they love you. Of course. <laughs> And what does your writing day look like? So you've got a job um, full time. Yeah, so um, my writing day is just generally I finish. So I work eight till four. I, I used to do nine till five, but since I've been working from home, I found I was getting up at the same time and then sitting around waiting to start work there was no commute or anything so I've changed my working hours which is good so I finish work at four um, and when I'm in the swing of, of writing I will literally turn off the work computer and pick up my laptop and start writing from four um, and I made a vow um, when lockdown started and I wasn't having to commute I used to commute an hour each way every day um, and I made a vow that I would try and use those two extra hours uh, to, to make sure I was writing every day. Um, I find a lot of my stuff happens later at night anyway. Um, I think because I'm writing quite dark, creepy stuff, it helps when I'm sitting in the house and it's dark and late at night. And, me. So I just write whenever, whenever I can, really, around my work. When in Damaged, a young girl goes missing when her parents leave her alone, which, when I read it, reminded me of the Madeleine McCann case. Was that intentional? Um, yeah, I suppose it would be impossible to not draw parallels between um, Alice's disappearance in, in Spanish and, and the way Madeleine McCann disappeared. Um, I think um, I've, I've always been fascinated with, with mysteries and unsolved cases and things. So, um, but I think 
that that's about where the parallels end. I mean, I did I did get a bit of flack on Goodreads particularly from people saying, oh, it's just stolen Madeleine McCann's story, um, which I thought was a little unfair because, you know, the, the, the disappearance is covered in, in the first page or so, um, and then the rest of the story is everything after that, and it's nothing, nothing to do with Madeleine McCann or anything about that. So um, I think in terms of, of the, the child disappearing while her parents are, are out partying, then yeah, you can't, uh, of course there's, there's parallels and similarities, but um, you know, I think a lot of fiction is, is inspired by real life. And I think real life dark and shocking so you know um, what do you love about being a writer and what don't you like <laughs> I love everything about being a writer um, and if I could do it all the time as my full-time job I would be very happy um, I love I love creating characters and and people and, and situations and settings and um, I've, I've I've always been quite a creative person. I mean, I did I, I do a lot of art and creating things and making things up. And I think I've got quite a vivid imagination as well. So I love putting things down on paper and. I really enjoy creating dialogue in stories as well um, and I find myself not always saying it out loud but I've got to, to make sure it sounds realistic and believable um, yeah I just love everything about writing um, it's although it's a job I, I don't really see it as work because I really, really enjoy it. And in terms of what I don't like about being a writer, I would say nothing so far. Um, I suppose at the moment, because I'm working, the downside is that I'm really not working because I finish my job and then I, then I write. So it's, I don't have a lot of, not, but I don't mind that. It's probably that I'm always working, but it's fine. Um, do you regret starting it so late then? Do you Absolutely. wish you'd started? Yeah, I really, I, you know, <laughs> I think when I was younger, I, I always made a lot of excuses and I always had reasons why I didn't do it. And I was... You know, it's, it's easy to make excuses not to do something. Um, I do wish I'd started earlier, but I, you know, my life was quite different then. Um, and I was, you know, I was living in London. I was working very long hours. Working, I was out meeting friends. So it it, it was never going to happen back then anyway. You know. But I do, I do really wish I'd started earlier. Um, uh, any subjects are absolutely no go for you to write about? Uh, I probably won't be writing about uh, COVID and lockdown and that sort of thing because I think we've had enough of it and I certainly have had enough of it and I don't particularly want to be writing about it. <laughs> And I'm, I'm not sure many people want to be reading about it either. That's that's just for me. Um, I would probably not feel comfortable writing about child sexual abuse. Um, but I'm not saying I would never include it in a story. Uh, I would find it quite uncomfortable. But if, if a story called for it, I don't know. 
Um, and would you consider writing in any other genres? Yeah, I would, absolutely. Um, I've got a couple of ideas bouncing around my head at the moment, actually, and one of them is kind of love story, I suppose you'd call it, but it's it's quite dark, um, so it wouldn't be a romance, your typical romance novel, but it's, it's probably quite different from anything I've written before. Um, and I'd also like to write a full-on horror story. Um, I love horror, horror stories and horror films, but I also think if I were to do that, I'd need to have a really original idea for it. I wouldn't want to do something that had been done a million times before. So um, I, I don't want to get pigeonholed either for writing the same story over and over again. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't rule anything out in terms of... Um, probably wouldn't write youth fiction um, and really know anything about teenagers so um what book would you most like to be a character in i think i'd quite like to be a character in lord of the rings <laughs> i'd like to go on the quest for the ring yeah. see Which, because I'm not a fan of fantasy, probably would be least likely to read these days fantasy book, but I really enjoy the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's, to me, being in that would be petrifying. Oh yeah, it would be awful, but I mean, <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, obviously I'm just a massive wuss. <laughs> Um, what's the nicest compliment you've ever received? Um, I I really like it whenever anybody um, tells me stuff they've liked about my books. Um, but probably the, the the best compliment I've received was um, from one of my beta readers for Girl A, which is my next book, and she said there was a particular scene she was reading which I wanted to be quite a, an intense scary scene and when she gave me her feedback she said when I read that bit, I had goosebumps it was so scary I had goosebumps and that really made my day because I thought yeah did what I hoped I so that was that was nice. But I also like it when people talk to me about my characters um, and they've got real in-depth opinions about my characters because it's a really tough thing that people have actually talked about these people that I've created out of my head and, and they've got real like strong opinions about them. And, you know, it's, it's nice. And do you get much feedback from your readers? I do. I think that's the, the beauty of social media. Um, I, I wasn't really on any social media before my book was released. Um, I, I used to be on Facebook years ago, uh, and then I came off because I just didn't think it was very good for me mentally. Um, but I signed back up when when I got my contract for damage um, and yeah I, I do I get messages from readers quite a lot on here and it, it's nice um, it's nice for people to be able to connect be able to talk to, to, to people about my books as well it's, especially now at the moment when you can't get out there in the real world and meet people and have all these plans plans and schemes about going to book festivals and meet, meeting readers and booking people and obviously that's happened because the year that my book came out was the year of the pandemic. At least you won't forget it I suppose. No exactly and also it will give me something good to remember about 2020 as well which I'll not just look back and think oh that was the year of 
coronavirus, I'll, it will always be the year that my, my first book came out. So nothing, nothing's going to take that away. I think um, actually it's kind of boosted the relationship between readers and authors. And I think uh, readers now are more keen than ever to get in contact and, and have that sort of interaction as well. So I think that's really nice. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and it, 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 it's nice for authors as well, because I think you spend a lot of time so immersed in the book um, that when people do want to talk to you about it, it it's, it's flattering. It, it makes you realise that you've done something right, because you know, if nobody wanted to talk about it, it would be a bit worried. So. <laughs> Yeah, I try and encourage people um, because now I'm not shy, so I don't care. I'll contact you. I'll keep contacting you. But I try and encourage people if they really want to, you know, to contact authors because I know they don't mind. So I'm very shy, but that's another beautiful thing about social media because shyness doesn't come across in on social media. So. Yeah, pe people don't believe me when I say I'm shy, but I'm painfully shy. Yeah. What's the most interesting thing you found out researching your books? I found out that um, coconuts kill around 150 people a year falling on their heads, which I thought was <laughs> especially if I was to ever set a, a story in the Caribbean. If you ever wanted to kill someone and get away with it, just pop them on the head with a, with a coconut under a, under a palm tree. <laughs> Might take more than a bop. I think it'd need quite a... <laughs> <laughs> um, are you friends with lots of other authors? I... Um, Again, uh, that, that's a, another good thing about social media. I've, I've connected with quite a lot of uh, authors online, which is great. Um, and there's a lot of people I talk to every day, on most days in, in some way or another. Um, and I'm also, uh, I know uh, Cara Ramsey quite well, her friend, and she, she's given me quite a lot of really good advice, especially when I was getting to the end of Damaged and not really knowing what to do. So, but yeah, there's quite a lot of authors that I talk to on Facebook quite a lot. Do you consider yourself as one of the Scottish group of authors or do you still consider yourself English? I don't know. I don't think Scottish people would consider me a Scottish author. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'll always be English, so, um, but, you know, if they accept me, I'd love to be a Scottish author. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty around, actually. I'd have to ask them for you. <laughs> um, if you were allowed to spend a day with an author, who would you choose? Gosh, um, I think uh, I've got to know Kerry Beavis quite well through through Facebook, and I think um, I think we could have a lot of fun together. <laughs> She'd get you uh, in so that. much trouble. Yeah, I think we would. Um, yeah, I'm not sure it would be a good good idea. And also, <laughs> I really um, I talk to uh, John Richter quite a lot as well. And I think he's probably one of the nicest people I've ever I've ever spoken to. I think it would be quite pleasant to spend spend some time playing board games with him. Did you see what I sent him for Christmas? Um, possibly. What was it? <laughs> I probably did. It was, I, was, I can send you a picture after it as a card and a book. Yeah, I'll send you a picture after if you haven't right, seen it. Yeah. It was very funny. And I he made me laugh. Did, but send me a picture and it'll jog my memory, but I'm sure yeah. it'll be. Yeah, I like John as well. He's great. Um, especially because he's my age, which is really unusual. Um, yeah, I think you're about the same age as us as well, aren't you? 
Um, I, actually, I think I'm probably a bit older. <laughs> okay, I'll ask you after. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? Well, gosh, what, where do I start? My whole life has been a, a series <laughs> of embarrassing events. So, <laughs> Does it involve um, nakedness like a lot of the other men that I've asked? No, I don't know what you're talking about there. Uh, <laughs> the thing that probably springs to mind that I tend to tell people when I'm talking about embarrassing stories is, um, so I'm, I'm quite particular about genes, uh, elder genes, um, and it, I don't really find very many pairs that I like. And I do find a pair that I like. I wear them to death because you know you never find them. Uh, and I used to have a pair that were my favourites. Uh, and I was living in Brighton at the time. I've been wearing these jeans every day. Quite well, not every day, but I mean, I've been wearing them for a long time. And they were they were wearing thin in places. Um, and I went out. I think it was. I don't remember, I was doing shopping maybe for lunch. And I was walking around, it was quite a warm day. Um, and I felt like my bum was wet. And I thought, what? I thought I must have sat in a, in a wet patch or something. Uh, and the whole time I was walking around, I just thought, gosh, I must have a or a wet bench. I got home uh, and I'd been out for about two or three hours. And I put in the mirror that the on the seat of my jeans had just completely split on both sides so I'm just gaping open and my butter is hanging out and the bottoms have been <laughs> mortifying um, and I'm sure people probably thought it was a look that I was going for. <laughs> Especially Probably probably the worst thing about it. <laughs> but it certainly wasn't. So I don't know what it is with you boys. There's always just bits of body parts escaping. I don't know. Us women don't have that problem. If we have an embarrassing story, it's usually tripping over or something. Oh, I trip over all the time as well. But, you know, it's yeah. too many of to account on. <laughs> yeah, I do that, so I don't worry. <laughs> um, random question, if you were going to be an animal, what animal would you be? I I think I'd like to be some sort of bird because I would love to be able to fly. Um, I quite often dream about flying, um, but I think I'd want to be a large bird, bird of prey, so that I'd wasn't at risk of getting eaten by a cat. So I think I'd like to be <laughs> maybe a harpy eagle. They're quite nice looking, beautiful birds. Uh, do you have any strange or unusual talents? Mm, well, I've got quite good intuition in, in that I generally know if somebody's lying to me. Um, get quite a strong feeling if I'm being lied to and I'm normally right but apart from that no and I was thinking about making something up just to make myself sound more interesting and then I thought oh, what if she asked me to demonstrate so I didn't, I didn't dare do that I'm not that cool don't worry <laughs> <laughs> everyone thinks I'm so mean I'm not honest I told you I'd be nice if you were stranded on a desert island, what three things would you have want with you? Right, I would need to have some way to listen to music because I love music and I probably listen to, to it most days uh, and I can't imagine a life where I wouldn't be able to listen to music. So I'd need some some form of music to listen to. Um, I would would need a laptop with an with an endless battery so that I could carry on writing. 
um, and probably an endless supply of gin. <laughs> Would the gin and the writing go well together though? Definitely not. <laughs> I, I, don't drink, I never drink alcohol when I'm writing because I need, I need a clear head, so. Yeah, so we won't expect any good books if you get stranded then. <laughs> Probably not, no. And what music do you listen to? I, I've got such a varied taste in music. Um, I listen to anything and everything from classical, uh, pop, I love Taylor Swift. Um, there's not really much that I don't listen to. I'm not, I'm not that much into rap and R&B and that sort of youth music. But, um, <laughs> I've got quite a varied taste. Um, probably my, my, my go-to is pop. Just cheers me up. Yeah. But it depends on my mood. Yeah. How would your friends describe you? Um, so I, I, I asked a couple of friends this because I didn't have a clue. Um, and uh, I got a couple of answers. And, and one of them is uh, a delightful fusion of fun-loving teen combined with a cantankerous old man, uh, which I can't really argue with, to be honest. That <laughs> pretty much sums me up. Um, uh, and, and the other one is life and soul of the party with a dark, sensitive side. I suppose that's probably fairly accurate as well. Bit of a Jekyll and Hyde, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, if you were to invite four famous people to a dinner party, who would you invite? I'd like to uh, to say something really cool here and come up with four really, really interesting people, but this, it would have to be the four members of ABBA because they're my absolute favourite. And if I had to have four people, it would could only ever be them, you know? Awesome. That would be actually really interesting. So has that from that? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I make no secret or apologies about the fact that ABBA are my absolute favourite of all time. So, you know, if I could spend an, an evening sitting around a table with them, talking to them, I'd be in heaven. And um, would you be cooking? Are you a cook or would you be ordering in? Yeah, I do cook. I enjoy cooking. Um, but I think if, if I had them in my house, I probably wouldn't want to be stuck in the kitchen. So I'd probably get someone else to cook or get a takeaway. <laughs> um, do you, your family read your books? And are they proud of what you've done so far? Um, they do and they are, yes, yeah. Um, are they your first readers? No, my, my brother, um, my eldest brother is one of my beta readers um, because he reads a lot and he reads a lot of the sorts of books that I write. So, um, and I trust his opinion. Um, and I know he'll be honest with me as well. So, um, but um, aside from that, no, um, my extended family have uh, read my book and it makes me feel slightly uncomfortable actually. Uh, even when my friends read it, I feel slightly uncomfortable because it's obviously quite a twisted story, um, you know, so uh, I've had a few people I know who've, who've said to me, oh, she can't believe you, you wrote that. <laughs> that came out of your head it's, it's a bit worrying um so i yeah it, it's it's lovely when when friends and family read my read my stuff, but um, it makes me feel a little bit embarrassed as well <laughs> well um, tell us some more about your new book my new book 
uh, which is out in March, is called Girl A. And it, the, the premise of it, it, it focuses on the life of a character called Beth Carter, who um, she, she, she's a very private person. She lives a very quiet, secluded life with her family. Um, and, and then one day out of the blue, she gets uh, a note through her door uh, uh, and somebody thinks that she is uh, girl A who was a woman who was involved in a, in a rather horrific um, historic criminal case many years ago. Um, and it's about the, the repercussions of somebody thinking that she is this person also because she doesn't um she's quite a private person there's a lot of doubts in her inner circle whether or not she could be girl a or not um so it's it, it's quite interesting i think um and it's some, somebody's got a real agenda to, to get to her and make her pay for what they think she's she's done. Sounds awesome. I can't wait to get my hands on that. <laughs> Not too long now, so it's uh, hopefully it, it will be as well received as the last one. Has it gone out to art readers? No, it hasn't yet. Um, I think that's going to be happening in the next few weeks. Um, that's when you know, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And then what's next for you? So I have finished book three in the last couple of weeks. Um, hopefully I'll have some news about that before too long. Um, but I'm just going to carry on writing. Uh, I've, got, I've got a couple of ideas in my head at the moment. I'm quite excited by both of them. And I'm trying to see which one wins in the struggle to be written down first because I had an idea just towards the end of writing book three and I thought, oh yeah, that'll be my next book. And then I had another idea the following week. So I've got to I've got to see which one wins. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna carry on writing as long as as long as uh, the ideas come to me, I'm gonna keep going because I love it. Awesome. I hope you do as well. <laughs> and that's just on one book. <laughs> um, I don't have any more questions unless there's anything that you want to tell your readers that I haven't asked. Um, the only thing I'd say, I, I haven't got a website um, purely because um, danscotto.com was taken up by my art website. So um, I don't have a, an author website currently, but um, I, I'm quite active on social media, mostly Facebook, but sometimes Twitter. Uh, and if anyone wants to find it, that's where I post most of my my updates about what I'm what I'm up to writing through my author page on Facebook. If anyone ever wants to know what I'm doing or what I'm up to, um, that's where you'll find the best information. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's been uh, pleasure. <laughs>